Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the CC3D flight settings. So we have a number of stabilization modes and the demise of some of the open pilot resources that we've been using in the hobby has meant that some of this information is tricky to get hold of. So what I'd like to do in this video is talk about how you set these things up and secondly, what each of them mean. Now you can see here that I actually have a three position switch. So I have three flight modes, stabilize one, two, and three. Those flight modes correspond to these. So in stabilize one mode, I have my roll set to attitude, pitch set to attitude, yaw set to axis lock, and thrust set to manual. If I flip my switch to stabilize two, then stabilize two will give me exactly the same thing, but this time my yaw changes to rate. And then stabilize three, which is the third position, which is the one it's defaulting to right now, everything is in rate mode. However, you can change these at any time. So what I'd like to do is go through each of these settings and kind of explain what they do and how you use them. So let's jump onto a couple of slides and I'll go through and explain my understanding of exactly what we're looking at here. So the modes that we're going to look at here are the ones that we've just seen in that open pilot interface. This is for the CC3D. Now the Revolution, which is the CC3D's slightly cleverer, bigger brother, has a couple more modes, but we're not going to cover it in this video. We'll start to do a mini series with the Revolution when we get one to have a look at on the channel, because it's sufficiently different with the GPS capabilities to almost treat it as a separate flight controller. So we're going to go through the, these settings here, manual rate, attitude, axis lock, weak leveling, virtual bar, acro plus and ratitude, which is rate and attitude stuck together, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And these are available for all these stabilized settings, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And you apply these to the roll, pitch and yaw. So that's your elevator, aileron and rudder controls and inputs from your radio. Now the way this normally works is that you would have the roll and pitch settings to be the same and then your would be slightly different. So you might have, like we've just seen, attitude set on roll and pitch and then your for something else like rate. So we'll go through each of these in turn and I'll try and explain what they do. And in some cases where it's a bit complicated, I've actually put the text that used to be on places like the OpenPilot.org site, which will try and hopefully cover it in a little bit more detail. The first mode we'll look at is manual. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It sends the control inputs directly from your radio to whatever the actuator is, whether that's the servo in a wing, whether it's the ESC, without anything at all. Now this means that it pretends that the flight controller isn't there and this is a great mode when you're flying in a plane. When you want to be able to take the CC3D out of the equation and fly it like you stole it, for example my flying wings, this is the mode that I fly in by default, you'll still have to arm the board in order for the throttle to work but it means that you can just fly it as though it hasn't got a CC3D in installed at all. This is absolutely not a mode for multi-rotors. You never want to use manual with motor rotors. Things will go horribly wrong. The next mode then is a very common one for multi-rotors. And as we go through this, you'll find that there's quite a few of these modes that are similar to rate that uh, we'll cover in a minute. But rate is the first one that you see on the list. Rate mode is absolutely one that you can use for multi-rotors and it gives you the minimum amount of help from the flight controller and it does all the hard work coordinating with all of the different parts of the system to make sure that your multi-copter can fly. It doesn't have auto level so if it's banked over and you let go of the stick then it will not auto level the craft. You have to push the stick in the opposite direction to also level it yourself. It's great for flips and rolls. So rate mode is one of the ones that we tend to get involved in when we first start turning off auto level and flying a little bit more aggressively. And what you do is you increase in the interface the number of degrees per second, uh, 360 degrees per second or more will kind of allow you to do flips and rolls and do some acrobatics. It is very hard to fly in rate mode for new starters and new starters normally need the next mode that we're going to look at which is essentially the self-level. So I would never start in this when you're learning to fly. 
The next mode is attitude mode. And this is the one that gives you the most help from the flight control board and it has full auto level always. So when you let go of the sticks on your radio, the craft will write itself, which is fantastic. Now this again is one that I'm using in the wing and this is the one that I use to try and save myself and pull the wing back to level if I'm getting a bit crazy. There is a settable max angle, so the maximum angle that the craft will bank over, and it's not great for flips and rolls because of that settable maximum angle that you've set, it won't go past that, so it's usually 40, 45 degrees. But that does mean that it's fantastic for things like FPV, because even if you're getting a bit carried away and you're being a loon and you're really pushing the stick past the point that you should, then the craft will not flip or roll. It will just have maximum bank angle and it will stay at that. So this is the one when you're starting to fly, absolutely recommend that you have everything set for your pitch and roll to attitude. And then if you get stuck, you just let go of the sticks and the craft will level itself. Next mode then is axis lock. This is really for the yaw setting or the rudder when it's turning around. It's like the old heading hold mode. Um, I would put it, it's like rate, but it's more like a locked in heading hold mode that we used to have on helicopters. And what that means is then rather than just use the gyro and occasionally, you know, you'll have a little bit of drift. It's also trying to sense that drift to make sure that it's taking that out of the equation and keeping everything absolutely lock solid. To be honest, I only ever tend to use this on the rudder. The other two, I'll tend to use one of the other modes. Weak leveling, exactly as you'd expect. It's like rate mode, but with a very slow auto level. So this can be a nice one for planes as well. So you can fly around in rate mode, and then if you let go of the sticks, then it will very gently pull everything back to level. Virtual bar, virtual bar makes the model feel like it is a helicopter with a fly bar. So if you know how that feels and you have flown helicopters with fly bar in the past, then this is essentially making the control inputs and the response of the model feel like a helicopter with a fly bar. It's great for aggressive flying and acrobatics and for those pilots coming to the CC3D and multi-copters from fly barred helicopters, this could be one to try. The next mode then is Acro Plus. Now the stuff here in the parenthesis is kind of from the website and it explains what it does. I'll try and explain it in my own words so that it kind of makes sense, but if it doesn't, then please read all that bump on the screen. It's like Rate and Manual had a baby. So Rate and Manual together give you Acro Plus. So rate mode, if you remember, is the one that gives you the ability to fly and the craft is doing all of the hard work, sensing where it is. It doesn't give you auto level, but it's doing all the hard work, coordinating all the different ESCs and power levels and everything else to make the craft fly. Manual, as I said at the beginning, is not something you use for multi-rotors, but when you really want to flip your craft about like a lunatic, then Acro Plus is great because what it allows you to do is to actually put some of that manual control directly into the actuators. So it's like rate mode, but it also gives you that direct control output, which can let you do some really, really crazy things. The last mode then that you'll have for things like the roll, pitch and yaw is Rattitude mode. This is one that I really like, actually. My two favourites on here are Attitude and Rattitude. Now, Rattitude is actually the love child of Rate and Attitude, which is why it's called Rattitude. See what they did there? So, the way it works is that when the stick is around the middle of the position, then you get Attitude Mode. And if you remember, Attitude Mode is that self-level, lots of help, Everything's nice and easy to fly, fantastic for beginners. As you push the stick to the outer limits, then it starts to flick into rate mode. Now by default, that percentage on the sticks is about 80%. So right at the very limits of the stick travel, it then forgets all about being really helpful and doing everything for you in attitude mode and puts you into rate mode. 
So this is a great mode that rather than you have to flick between attitude and rate mode, depending on whether you want all the help or you want to try flips and rolls, this allows you to have all that within one flight mode to have the safety and stability of auto level around the middle of the stick, but also to be able to really push it, smash the stick over to one side or the other and have the craft flipping and rolling. If we then go and have a look at the settings on the CC3D that we've just seen for the throttle, there are four. So the first one is manual throttle, and that's the one that you're probably familiar with. The higher the throttle, the more power there is to the motors. The last one we'll talk about is cruise control. We'll do that first. Cruise control works with the other controls to add extra throttle. So the way it works is if you set the throttle to cruise control, as you bank the craft over, then what the CC3D will do is actually try and increase the throttles to maintain the height, which is a really nice mode. It doesn't require a barometer, so it will work on things like the CC3D. All it's doing for every degree of angle that it's off from level, it's applying a little bit more throttle or, or vice versa. The two in the middle are the interesting ones. Unfortunately, although they're listed here, they won't work on a stock standard CC3D because to use them, you need a barometer. And the two modes are altitude hold. And we've seen this in other things like we saw it in the multi-wee stuff. And we've seen it in things like the APM and Pixhawk videos. Altitude hold is where you tell the craft that you want it to maintain the height that it's at. And that means that you can fly around and the craft will always try and use the barometer and the accelerometer readings to make sure that if it's sinking, it will apply a little bit more thrust to rise. Or if it's rising, then it'll decrease the thrust slightly so that it sinks down. Now, it won't stay absolutely locked in the air. You always have to cover your barometer with a bit of foam to stop any stray wind from the props affecting the reading, but it'll probably wander about six to eight feet up or down, but it can be a nice way to fly. Altitude Vario is similar to Altitude Hold, but it changes the way that the throttle works. Altitude Hold still works the same way as the standard throttle, but with Altitude Vario, the throttle works in a slightly different way, where when the throttle's in the middle position, you're telling the flight controller that you want it to hold the attitude. When it's below the middle position of the throttle, you're telling the flight controller that you want it to sink. And if it's above the middle throttle position, you're telling the flight controller that you want the craft to rise. Now, Altitude Vario can occasionally catch people out. It's very similar to a lot of other modes on other flight controllers. And occasionally we get people sending us messages that their throttle feels really mushy. And typically it's because they have the equivalent of altitude vario turned on their machine. When they turn that off, they get that kind of manual, directly connected throttle feeling back again. So hopefully that helps for those of you that are trying to figure out what all these modes are. Personally, I would say if you're brand new to the CC3D, I would start in attitude mode. As you start to get more adventurous, then personally I'd go into ratitude mode and I'd use those on the roll and pitch settings. On your yaw axis, you could either have it as manual or you could have it as axis lock. Both would work really well. If you really get good and you want to fly like an absolute lunatic, then I would probably look on a quadcopter for something like Acro Plus to have a lot of fun with. I would also recommend that you keep the throttle as manual. Uh, manual works very well. Uh, and if you want to try it, cruise control, again, is something that's fun to play with because it allows you to move the craft left and right and it doesn't sink too much, where if you don't have cruise control turned on, you manually have to give it an extra little bit of throttle when you're banking the craft over to maintain the height. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.